Welcome to our tutorial about speed pack. Basically, speed packs create simplified representations of assemblies without losing any references. This is really convenient if you're working on large, complex assemblies. In this case, using speed pack can significantly improve your performance while working with an assembly. Let's go to our configuration manager, right click and select add speed pack. First thing to do here is select the faces and bodies to include. Now click Enable Quick Include. You can adjust the slider for faster selection of faces and bodies as well. You've got the option here to remove ghost. This option basically improves performance by reducing the system memory requirement. It'll show only the active and available bodies in the speed back configuration. All the others will be hidden. SolidWorks gives us a little parenthetical note about it. Further reduces memory. A good idea for large assemblies. Let's click OK. And now, as you can see, our speed pack configuration is available as a child configuration. Let's mouse over our part. And you can see how speed pack works here. Keep in mind that this feature won't work with all video cards. You're going to need to review the tested video card list at SolidWorks.com. You'll also need to check your video card settings and software OpenGL options. And this concludes our tutorial about the Speed Pack tool. Welcome to our tutorial on enhancements in eDrawings in SolidWorks 2009. I've got an assembly here with RealView active. Let's go to File, Save As, and we're going to save it as an eDrawing type. Let's accept the default name and click Save. Now let's bring up eDrawings and let's open the file we saved. Here it is, let's click on it and then select Open. Now go to Tools from the main menu, select Options, and under Performance, let's select Best Appearance, including Reflections. Click OK. In SolidWorks 2009, eDrawings now supports appearances, scenes, and lighting that you defined in SolidWorks, as well as in assemblies. Also, SolidWorks now applies floor reflections as well. OK, let's close this file. If you find that you're experiencing problems with this feature, you need to go to the SolidWorks website and review their list of supported graphic cards and settings. With the file closed, select Graphics Boost. This works in the same manner as the software GL in previous releases of SolidWorks. Let's cancel out of this dialog window for now, and let's go back to SolidWorks. I'm going to close this file and select No here. Now let's open an assembly. Click Open. Go to Insert from the main menu, Tables, Bill of Materials. Let's accept the default options and click OK. And let's place our BOM somewhere about here. Go to File, Save As, and let's save it as file type of eDrawing. Under Options, be sure to check Save Bill of Materials features to eDrawings file. Let's click OK and click Save. Now let's go back to eDrawings and click Open. Here's our eDrawing file containing our Bill of Materials. Keep in mind that the Bill of Materials can only be viewed here, not moved or resized or edited in any way. And this concludes our tutorial on enhancements in SolidWorks 2009 eDrawing. Welcome to our tutorial about automatic dimensioning and relations in FeatureWorks. Let's begin by going to Tools from the main menu, select Add-ins. Now select FeatureWorks and click OK. At this point, I'm going to import an IGS file. Select File, 
Open. And from the Files of Type drop-down menu, select the IGS extension. Do we want to run Import Diagnostics on this part? No. Do we want to process this feature recognition? No. Let's go to FeatureWorks Options now. Select Dimensions, Relations. And let's check Enable Auto Dimensioning of Sketches. Let's ensure Add Constraints to Sketch is also checked. Scheme, let's leave Baseline selected. Let's accept the default placement options and click OK. Now let's go to FeatureWorks and select Recognize Features. Recognition Mode, Automatic. Feature Type, we'll leave it at Standard Features. And let's recognize all of the feature types except Volume. Click the Next arrow. As you see, SolidWorks recognize the base revolve. I'll click OK. Let's open our sketch. Right click, open sketch. Normal 2. As you see, SolidWorks places the dimensions and relations for us. For example, SolidWorks can now recognize concentric relations. Let's exit the sketch. And this concludes our tutorial about enhancements to FeatureWorks auto dimensioning and relations capabilities. Welcome to our tutorial about base loft recognition in FeatureWorks. Now FeatureWorks can interactively recognize base lofts. FeatureWorks can recognize base lofts with two or more dissimilar profiles and the profiles can be parallel or non-parallel. Let's begin by opening an IGS file. And let's navigate to an IGS file type. There's our file. Do we want import diagnostics? No. Do we want feature recognition? No. Okay, let's go to FeatureWorks on the main menu and select Recognize Features. Under Recognition Mode, we're going to select Interactive. Under Feature Type, I'll select Base Loft. Now, let me select the End Face. And we're ready to recognize. Let's click OK. SolidWorks processes our request. And now it's finished. Here's our loft. Let's right click, edit. We're able to edit the loft now. OK. And this concludes our tutorial about base loft recognition in FeatureWorks. Welcome to our tutorial about mirror patterns in FeatureWorks. FeatureWorks can now recognize mirror patterns. Let's begin by opening a file, Files of Type, IGS. Let's select our file for this tutorial and click Open. No to Diagnostics, No to Feature Recognition. Now let's go to FeatureWorks on the main menu, select Recognize Features. Recognition Mode, Automatic. Feature Type Standard. Let's select everything except Volume. Click on the next arrow. SolidWorks processes our request. And SolidWorks found an extrude, a number of revolve features, and some fillets. Now let's select Find Pattern. Pattern Recognition Mode Automatic. Pattern Type. Let's select Mirror. And now we need to select the pattern features, the seed and mirror features. Next. SolidWorks informs us that one mirror was found. Click OK. And click OK. SolidWorks starts the recognition process. Here we have our mirror pattern. And let's close this document. 
I'm not going to save it. Let's go back to Featured Works, Recognize Features. Now I'm going to leave only extrudes, fillets, and chamfers under my automatic features list. Click Next. And again, select Find Patterns. Let's choose our Seed feature and our Mirror feature. Click Next. One mirror found. OK. And click OK. The recognition process starts again. And once again, we have our mirror features right here. This concludes our tutorial about mirror pattern recognition in FeatureWorks. Welcome to our tutorial about what's new in PhotoWorks. Let's begin by activating PhotoWorks. Go to Tools and select Add-ins. Let's check PhotoWorks and click OK. Let's begin by taking a look at the PhotoWorks preview window. The preview window is a resource and time-saving device. It lets you view your changes before you commit to a full rendering. You can resize your preview window and the smaller the preview window, the faster your updates will be registered in the preview window. Updates made in your graphic area are displayed in your preview window. For example, if we change graphic orientation, the preview window is updated as well. Across the top of the preview window are a number of commands. Here's the view selector. Next is pan. Here's a zoom tool. Zoom to area. Here's a Zoom to Fit tool and a Save tool, which lets us save our view as any one of a number of different graphic file types, JPEGs, PNGs, etc. Let's cancel out of this. The last button here toggles between Stop and Resume. When you click Stop, all the preview commands are grayed out and disabled. Now, if I make any changes to the graphic area, the preview area will not be affected. And this gives you the opportunity to assess your changes visibly and quickly. When we resume the preview, the preview window automatically updates to match the graphic area. In SOLIDWORKS 2009, we also have some extra scenes to choose from. Let's try Backdrop Studio Room. We select it, click Apply, and then Close. You can also access this scene from the Apply Scene Commands drop-down menu. If you want to hide the origin point, just go to the View command on the main menu and unselect Origin Point. And this concludes our tutorial about what's new in PhotoWorks in SOLIDWORKS 2009. Welcome to our introduction to drawings in SOLIDWORKS 2009. Let's start by creating a new drawing document. Let's select Make Drawing from Part Assembly. SOLIDWORKS prompts us with a dialog window where we select the sheet format and size. I'm going to select Landscape B and then click OK. The View Palette is open. Here's the View Palette icon. We click on it to close it. Oops, I don't quite have it. OK, there we go. And we click on it again to open it. From this drop down menu on the top, we can select from a list of currently open documents. Down below, we see eight different views of our part that we've got selected up top. I'm going to grab the top view. Let me just use the top view here as my front view. It doesn't matter how the part is oriented in the SOLIDWORKS part document. I'm going to position my front view in my desired location and then release the mouse. If I keep moving my mouse, I get a top view here, an isometric view, and the side view. Drag it down to see the bottom view. Let's actually use a different view, not the front view. Let's click Escape. Select this view. Click Delete. 
Do we want to delete it? Yes. Let's open the palette again. This time I'm going to bring in the front view and use that as my front view. Let's release the mouse. Here's my top view. Drag it up this way for the isometric view and drag it out sideways for the side view. Let's click the escape key. Now I can grab and reposition each view. Next, let's change the appearance of my isometric view. I want it to be shaded with edges. And OK. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Another handy feature we have is the 3D drawing view. I can rotate the part in 3D space to help me better understand it. And when I'm done, click OK. Same thing for each of the views. Rotate it, click OK. On top here is an annotation tab. If you don't see this tab, right click and select annotation to make sure that it's checked. Now let's insert some dimensions. We'll start with the angular dimension. When I mouse over, you see that I can position the dimension in different places. I want it to be 60 degrees. Left click. Now I'll grab the dimension and move it out here. Next, I'm going to insert a dimension between these two edges. Let's click on this edge. And when I move, the dimension changes. Let's left click to accept a dimension. And then we can drag it to move it out of the way. Now I'm going to select this line. Again, position my dimension where I want it. And let's use the radius dimension. By the way, to turn the leader in the opposite direction, left click. And then you can just reposition it as you need. Another diameter dimension. You can see that SolidWorks automatically aligns the dimensions. Now let's dimension this fillet. Since we've got this fillet in six different places, let's insert a note here. We'll say typical. TYP for short. Let's zoom out and insert some overall dimensions. Notice that when I click on the arrows, they jump from the inside to the outside and vice versa. OK. Let's dimension these two circles. And let's specify the angle between these two lines. I want to insert a note on this chamfer. Right click and select annotation. Oops, we're still in the dimension property manager. Let's OK that. OK, right click and select annotations. Note. Let's drop our note here. Let's say cham 2 millimeters. We've got formatting options if we need them. I'm just going to OK out of that. And zoom back out. Let's go down to this view. And let's insert some dimensions here. And here. Lastly, let's dimension the thickness of the cylindrical segment. And the distance from the outside edge. Be sure you select the correct lines. We've got a chamfer here. And I believe this is our last one. Let's click OK.
And this concludes our introduction to drawing in SolidWorks 2009. Welcome to our tutorial about Model View. Let's start by going to File, New, and we'll select a drawing type of document and click OK. Sheet Format and Size dialog window opens. Let's accept Landscape B and click OK. The Model View Property Manager opens. If you don't see it, let's go to Insert, select Drawing View, and Model. Under Part Assembly to Insert, we see the current open document. I've only got one part open, B02. Below, we can expand the thumbnail to preview the part. Mouse over the thumbnail to see a callout of the part name. And let's collapse the thumbnail preview. Check here to enable Start Command when creating a new drawing. This option is available when you're inserting a model into a new drawing. The Model Property Manager appears when you create a new drawing, except if you're going to use well, let me show you quickly how this works. Let's close this drawing. No, we don't need to save our changes yet. Okay, back to New Document. When you select Make Drawing from Part Assembly, click OK to accept Landscape B. Okay, as you can see here, the Model View Property Manager is not open, but the View Palette Property Manager is open. And we can go to Insert, Drawing View, and select Model to open the Model View Property Manager. The last options on this manager are the Cosmetic Display options. At this point, I'm going to double click on my part. The first option is the number of views, single or multiple. Orientation, we can choose from any number of standard views. You'll be well familiar with most of these front, left, back, top here, isometric. Let's drag in the isometric view. We've also got more views down below. We can just check on the ones that we want to incorporate. Check this option to get a preview of the model. If the preview option is unchecked, you won't be able to see your model in the graphic area. The following section lets us control import options. Check here to import annotations. Dim Expert annotations is grayed out here. That's because I didn't use Dim Expert on this model. More options Auto Start Projected View. If this is checked, you're able to insert projected views of the model after you've inserted the model view. Below, we can select Display Style. In the Scale Control area, we can choose between the Sheet Scale and a Custom Scale. We can also choose a User-Defined Scale. Next, we have Dimension Type, Projected and True. True represents the accurate model value, and projected, the 2D dimension. The last control area is for cosmetic thread display, high quality and draft quality. Next, let's bring in the front view, then the top view, a side view, and an isometric view, and click OK. Let's rearrange our views a little bit. I want to change the display style for the isometric view. Let's choose Shaded with Edges. Next, I'm going to select the front view, which is the parent view. This part has, within the cylindrical segment, a blind hole. In order to see this feature, from Display Style, let's select Hidden Edges Visible. Because I chained the display for the parent view, both the child views change style automatically. Let's click OK. And now we're ready to dimension our model. Let's start by using a circular dimension. Here's a radius dimension. I want this dimension to be a diameter dimension. Let's right click and select Display as Diameter. Let's dimension these two circular edges as well. And let's do this one next. Now let's dimension the overall width and distance between these two circular entities. And between these two circular entities. 
as well between these two. Lastly here, let's insert an angular dimension. 30 degrees, and I think we're done. Let's just move some dimensions around to better position them. OK. Now let's dimension the front view. And lastly, let's dimension the depth of the blind hole. And click OK. Let's actually change the direction of these arrows. Double click. And this one too. OK. And this concludes our tutorial about model view.